Gresham's law is often kicked around on Bitcoin Twitter, as we like to call it. And it's just the idea that uh, there's always going to be a flight to harder monies. And Bitcoin is uh, the hardest money ever conceived in, in a lot of people's estimation where fiat, you can print it. Uh, might be able to move easily, might make your needs pretty simple, but you can print more of it. Gold, you can always mine more of it. Bitcoin, you can mine more of it, but it's dropping and there's a supply cap, so it's the hardest money. And there's always going to be a flight to the hardest asset. I'm wondering, just based on my, my last question, if we're in a super bubble and asset prices are bid up, does that mean the same for Bitcoin? Is Bitcoin also bid up or are we seeing a flight to a real hard asset uh, right now? Uh, it's kind of two conflicting ideas hitting each other. It can be kind of hard to pick out which one's actually happening and maybe both are happening in different ways, but be keen to get your analysis on that. Yeah, well, Gresham's uh, law, you know, the the street version is that bad money drives out good money, but that's only the case <clears throat> when there's a fixed government ratio or exchange rate between one money and the other. There is no fixed exchange ratio between Bitcoin and the US dollar. Those things can fluctuate. So we eventually feel that, you know, in, in a positive light that Bitcoin is going to replace fiat money and that the government will adopt some kind of cryptocurrency and, you know, and that Wall Street will adopt their products to it uh, because it has more uh, positive technical features that we really do want, even if we're not trying to make money uh, as an investment um, off of that. So the economic scientist <coughs> and the policy advisor, they're all pro uh, cryptocurrencies um, and, you know, they provide a benefit. And so, but right now, uh, Bitcoin and others are, you know, it's it's in mostly an in, uh, investment vehicle rather or savings vehicle, uh, which are both important. But, you know, there's also going to come a time when it's got to become a dominant uh, transaction vehicle. And I think that will happen, uh, but it hasn't happened yet. So as you say, there are a lot of concurrent factors that weigh on the value of Bitcoin, just as there were and are uh, various factors that weigh on the value of the dollar. I mean, who would have expected the value of the dollar over the last couple of months to be increasing um, rather than decreasing? So, you know, there's all sorts of forces out there. Now, what I expect is that, you know, uh, as people take more money out of the stock part market and start spending it on houses and Teslas and so on and so forth, that as that money gets into the economy, you're going to see even more consumer price uh, inflation in, in terms of the dollar. And that's going to support be supportive of Bitcoin if the stock market starts to uh, when the stock market starts to come undone, you know, there's going to be a flight uh, to harder assets. Uh, Bitcoin's going to be a hard asset. Government 30-year bonds are going to at least temporarily be a, uh, a hard asset. And commodities, uh, commodity producers, um, commodity suppliers, uh, gold and silver, uh, those are all going to benefit um, in terms of it being a hard money that people are going to flee to in bad times. And just simply rebalancing portfolios means that, you know, there are a lot of people out there with no gold and silver, no inflation hedges. Uh, the number of people who don't have any crypto, any Bitcoin whatsoever. Uh, I get so many uh, Facebook messages, um, podcast request or just talking to friends of people who have never even considered Bitcoin, uh, but they realize how much it's gone up in value. So they they're interested and now they want to know how. But literally, um, well, I can't say that because I know a lot of people um, who have been interested in Bitcoin for years and have used it. We've we've used it here at the Mises Institute 
uh, for transactions and memberships for, you know, a number of years, uh, donations um, it, it is, a, is a common thing, too, uh, where people donate their Bitcoins or in other assets that have appreciated in value and to be above board with the tax authorities, uh, they want to take those uh, deductions uh, to offset their regular income. So, you know, as, as all of these uh, factors play out in the economy, and it's not just the U.S. economy, of course, uh, but think of what's going on in China, where they're cracking down, where the Marxists are cracking down on entrepreneurs. They've been in the mindset of getting out of time, uh, getting out of uh, China and getting out from underneath the communist state over there for a long time. They've been moving their money. And one of the best ways uh, that they'd like to move their money when is with Bitcoin. And they've come up with all sorts of other ways to do it. But believe me. And then Russia is another one uh, where they, you know, the people who have money are never sure whether or not the regime is going to take it all away. And even in the US, uh, there's that kind of pressure as well. You know, is Elizabeth Warren and her clique going to come to power and put a, a Thomas Piketty 70% wealth tax on the economy or OAC, uh, who wants to do pretty much the same thing? So there are some real things that are going to cause some real jumps, you know, once it becomes known and obvious that they're cracking down and i fully expect everybody to try to crack down um on bitcoin then there's going to be huge move move ups uh but the main thing you know is that all of these outside values these tangible values uh and i would include bitcoin in what i call tangible values uh they're all going to benefit from the printing of the Federal Reserve uh, and the, you know, all of their activities and then higher prices in the economy, stock markets uh, melting down and international troubles. All of these are going to benefit Bitcoin going forward.